Hey guys, welcome back to part two of this video series. I'm David Mathis. I hope you guys enjoyed part one, learned a little bit about it. Hope you guys have been enjoying the other content on my channel. Um, please like, subscribe, and share if you do. Hit that little notification button so that you can be sure to know when new videos like this one come out. So I wanna pick up on what part one was all about, which was finding your BMR using the molar equation. So if you have not seen that video, I suggest you go back and watch that because it's going to give context to this video. So in that example, we used me, a 34 year old male with 145 pounds of lean body mass and about 15 pounds of fat mass converted into kilograms for the equation, came out to a BMR of 1,719.84 calories, which as I explained, is what we use in order to just survive, right? That's, that's what my body needs in order calorie wise to just survive, um, to keep my organs running, to keep my heart pumping, things like that. So we're gonna, now we're gonna talk about activity factors. Um, activity factors are basically how active are you during the day? And there's a range from 1.2 to 1.9. Now, 1.2 would be not very active, okay? 1.375 is moderately active. 1.55 is starting to get up a little bit more above moderate. 1.7 is fairly active, and 1.9 is very active. Now, we use this activity level, activity factor, I'm sorry, um, in regards to lifestyle and exercise, okay? And we take the average. So let's say somebody was 1.2 as far as their daily activity level, but their exercise was at a 1.9. That's gonna even out to 1.55. So you would use that to move on with the rest of the example here. So let's just say that, okay? Let's say because I do online coaching, because um, my job, my school, everything requires a lot of sitting during the day, I'm gonna put my activity factor for just daily stuff at 1.2. However, my training is very intense. It's hard, I do it five, six days a week. I'm gonna put that at a 1.9, okay? So that's gonna do, it's gonna even out to that 1.55 that I just talked about. And that's what I'm gonna use as far as the acti activity factor for this example moving forward, okay? We've also got a metabolic factor that we need to take into consideration. So a metabolic factor is basically how healthy is your metabolism, right? Um, if it's down on a 0.8, it's on the lower end. Um, maybe you're experiencing some issues. If you're at a 1.2, you're probably burning through stuff real quick. Like you've got a very, very fast metabolism. So me, I put mine at about a 0.9, okay? It's not slow, but I'm also not 14 years old running around being able to eat cheeseburgers, Whoppers, pizzas, all that stuff all the time without gaining weight. I am 34, so my metabolism is starting to slow a little bit. It's not as drastic as what people make it out to be once you hit 30. Um, as long as you stay eating healthy, you stay active, but I think that it's pretty fair to say I'm not at a 1.2 anymore. So just conservatively, I'm gonna put a 0.9. So what we do then is we take the BMR that you found out for yourself, right? For my case, it's 1,719.84 calories. I'm going to multiply that by my activity factor, 1.55. That's gonna get me 2,665.75 calories, okay? But that's not where we stop. We have to take that 2,665 calories and multiply that by your metabolic factor. For me, it's 0.9. What that comes out to as my maintenance calories would be 2,399.17, basically 2,400. And I'm gonna let you take a screenshot of that so you know. Basically, that number is pretty much dead on, okay? 2,400 calories is pretty much where I see my maintenance level being on a daily basis, meaning if I want to lose weight, I need to go below that 2,400. Or if I want to gain weight, I need to go above that 2,400. Granted that all things stay equal, right? 
that your activity level stays equal, your metabolic factor stays equal, um, you know, your exercise, everything like that. So this is really important. That's why understanding the Mueller equation and getting your BMR straight is the key to going in and figuring out the rest of this for your maintenance calories, right? Um, there's online calculators out there that try to factor in and figure out your maintenance calories. Um, they're not very accurate, guys. Going on like bodybuilding.com, things like that, these other websites that you find, they're not very accurate. You need to take time. You need to get data for yourself, okay? You need to understand and know exactly how much body fat you have, how much lean body mass you have. <clears throat> you need to be truthful with yourself about your activity level in both your daily living and your exercise, okay? Because just being off by a little bit is going to throw that maintenance calorie um, total off by quite a bit. And that can hurt you whether or not you're trying to lose fat, gain muscle, um, be in a surplus, reverse diet. If you don't have an accurate maintenance calorie to go off of, it's going to make all those things very difficult. So you have to be aware of what your activity factor is, be truthful about that, and do your best and have your best estimate as far as your metabolic factor too. Um, put all those together and you're gonna get a pretty damn accurate maintenance calorie. Um, like I said, for me, 2400 is within a few calories, all right? It's pretty, pretty even. Um, so that's how you go about doing that. I hope you guys learned a little something. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Um, if you like the video, if this was helpful, if you guys want to see more content like this or something else that you've seen on my channel you like, please reach out to me, let me know. Um, hit the subscribe button, like, share, hit that little notification button, and I will be back soon with more content for you. Thank you guys very much for tuning in.